And welcome back, everybody, to D and D Outdoors. It is 2023, New Year, new us, right, Dustin? <laughs> How you doing yeah. this year? <laughs> We're falling out, getting ready for another cold spell coming through. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that as of yet in Arizona. So, should be good to go on having to deal with the cold spells and all that fun stuff out here. Yeah, we... We lost power the Friday before Christmas, and it was supposed to be down in the single digits. We Ooh. didn't get power back till Christmas. It's the first time I've ever seen the water in the toilet bowl frozen. Really? Oh, geez. That doesn't sound like much fun at all. Oh, it was not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, so you got bad. What, what do you do then? Go outside? I broke out to sleeping bag. Luckily, Adam was at his mom's for Christmas, so I was here by myself. So if I got cold, I'd go sit that in the car for a little while, whatever. Gosh. Oh, man. Yeah, we don't have to deal with that in Arizona. So well, I'm glad you survived it. And you didn't yeah. lose any didn't get any frostbite that you know of? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Always got a little fun to it, right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, well, we hope all you guys had a great, guess what, December was the last time we were on here. We took a little, took a little break from y'all. I'm sure you guys missed us dearly. We are, what, the number two podcast in Uganda. We found out over winter break. So mm -hmm. welcome to all, all of our Ugandians or people from Uganda. We're glad, we're glad you find us fun to listen to. So, yeah. Well, in case you're listening from Uganda and you want to hunt Arizona, the Arizona Elk and Pronghorn Draw just opened up today. You have until February 14th, so until Valentine's Day, to put in for um, the Elk and Pronghorn Draw out here in Arizona. Um, it's that time of year now. Draws are going to start opening up, and the fun will begin where the states will get to take your money, and hopefully you can go hunting. If not, Thank you. I guess they can just thank you for the uh, donations you made to them. That's right. Keeping the game commission employed. Yeah, keeping them fat and sassy. But, you know, I think speaking of hunting, there's going to be some good – I think there's going to be some new hunting opportunities coming up here within the next two to three years. Um, we have talked about extensively last year. Grizzly bears attacking people, college wrestlers wrestling grizzly bears to save their friend. Um, now, the Montana Fish and Wildlife is drafting a proposal or going with Alternative B, which would help delist the grizzly bears off the Endangered Species Protection Act and return hunting manage or return management of the grizzly bears to the state. Um, hunting will obviously be part of this management plan. Uh, researching this, it was kind of surprising. They're estimating there's 1,800 to 2,000 grizzly bears in Montana. Darn. That's a lot of bears. It is. Yeah. Um, they just extended the public comment for 30 days. So you have until, well, they did previously. So you have until February 4th now to make your comment on it. Um, you can email them um, or you, go on, you can go onto their website. We'll share the link uh, with this as well in our Instagram and Facebook pages of how you can make your comment. You can also read the drafts on there. Um, yeah, 2,000 grizzly bears. That's a lot of damn bears. Yeah. What and they're they only eat? elk, deer, dogs. Yeah, it's cutting on your, your elk population too. Yeah, I've been reading online with the grizzly bears and wolves between that that um. There's a lot of moose and elk populations that are taking the hit now in Montana because it's not like that's spread out across the state of Montana. They're only in like about four different zones. So, really? yeah. So, yeah, the grizzly bear population is not, it doesn't span the whole state of, um, of Montana. It only, um, it only spans, I think they said about four different zones. And I believe, you know, if you think of it, a lot of Eastern Montana is actually like the, um, um is actually like the plains area so like a lot of where the grizzly bears are located are like in the 
what's that western side of the state so yeah. they're within kind of they run along the um greater yellowstone obviously where grizzly bears are world famous for then, then the north west corners of the state along the um idaho border on that side and then there's a little bit of a population within the idaho as well within kind of the bitterroot valleys but yeah so it's not like it's the whole state it's only about a third of montana where all these bears are at and that's even more sand yeah yeah it's definitely interesting so i guess I wonder it, how many like how many bears per square mile it is you know Hmm, that is interesting. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure one bit on that. That would be interesting we'll to, to find out. That, yeah, yeah, that's definitely something that no. Um, it does look like they also might possibly be coming to Washington. I know that's something that they want to do is put them into Northern Cascades in their home range. They're just they're just throwing stuff out there everywhere. You know, we're just gonna everybody gets a wild animal. That. Um, you know, help, I don't know, bring them back, I guess, is what they want to do. Here in Arizona, they Center for Biological Diversity, those lovely people, they want the Fish and Wildlife Services to reintroduce, take a guess, what do you think they want to reintroduce here in Arizona? Take a guess. Probably won't guess it. But is it a mammal? Yes, it is a mammal. And it eats huh? stuff. Huh? And it eats stuff. <laughs> Wild cows. No, we already had those problems. Okay. The they would like to reintroduce jaguars to Arizona and the Gila around the, on the New Mexico Arizona border in the Gila National Forest. Because Technically, this is Jaguars' home range. Um, we do get Jaguars down south um, every now and then on trail cameras. But the problem is the extent of this home range isn't known. They do know Jaguars used to be here, but there wasn't a stable population ever really recorded in Arizona. Typically, what we get are like the wandering males that are looking for new territories or just coming up here. But there's not a stable breeding population here. Um, Another thing, the Gila National Forest is one of the best areas in the country to hunt elk. So while you're out there, you can have jaguars coming at you. Uh -huh. That's even better, yeah. That's pretty yeah, good. yeah I've, I've heard stories about people seeing them down south. I don't know how much I believe that, but in southern Arizona, because there, there have been recording sites on game cameras and stuff of them. But yeah, they want to bring that into there. And of course, have the government pay for it and Really have no plan to manage. Just really like kind of like the wolves, just toss it over, push for it, and then bring them in. Um, the problem How is, big are they? oh, they're huge. They make mountain lions look small. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we've got stories of like the bobcats here that'll attack you know turkey hunters sometimes. Yeah. No. This will. So I was I was listening to an interview. With a biologist that is kind of against the reintroduction of jaguars here. And they'll eat mountain lions. So it'll help, it'll reduce the mountain lion population. Um, full grown jaguar measures five to eight feet from nose to tail and between 140 to 300 pounds. So, um, yeah. A, That's a big old cat. Yeah. A, Adult male jaguar, for example, weighs between about 135 to 175 pounds, while females weigh between 90 to 105 pounds. So it's about double the size. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I don't I don't see it happening. That's I think that's a push. I don't think first we got wolves in that area already. You're gonna toss jaguars in the mix. Jaguars are gonna eat the wolves, I guess. Eventually, probably will. Um, because jaguars aren't afraid of anything. And then on top of all of that, I mean, there's really, I don't know, really much management plan. Um, it's it's just they just make it up as they go. Um, you know, they want to essentially, in my opinion, this is gonna be a way um 
you know, even in Mexico, these jaguars are on the brink of extinction just because there's not much genetic diversity around them because they're a population that's just kind of stuck. You know, there's no, the closest other ones are down south in Lake Belize. So it's not like they're traveling, they're stuck here. Right. Um, and essentially, it's just a way to try to eliminate hunting by just keep adding more and more big predators to the mix, in my opinion. You know, I've heard stories that they want to also eventually bring grizzly bears back to Arizona. That ain't going to happen. You know, you can have grizzly bears, jaguars, <laughs> wolves. You wouldn't be able to go out your house. No. They might as well just bring back a, like a T-Rex while they're at it. Didn't they <laughs> do a, 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 a woolly mammoth? I think they're trying to do it. I don't know if they redid it yet. I know I've heard about that in the past, but I don't think they actually like succeeded with it. Take so, the guns and bring back T Rex. Yeah. And here's the thing, too. I have been um, reading, you know, in the past, um, there's a lot of um, what's the best way to put it? People in the country south of us that have killed these jaguars. So there's going to be repopulating going down to Mexico and they're going to get killed down in Mexico. So there was a case of that where uh, what was it called? It was a famous jaguar that was like one of the first ones on camera and then no one saw it. Then all of a sudden they saw it in Mexico or someone killed it. So, I mean, you're going to be facing that too. Well. <laughs> yeah. It'll be interesting. It'll be definitely interesting to see um, what they want to do here. On top of that, you know, the wolves in Colorado are going to be reintroduced. They have found two spots. One is going to be between Monarch Pass, between Gunnison and Montrose. Or actually, used to live in Montrose. Beautiful area, great mule deer hunting. The interesting, a lot of ranching area up there. It's very open. And the other one is going to be between Glenwood Springs and Vale which I like because that's where all the people that voted for the wolves are going to be at or around Vales where all the rich people live at like Aspen and all the famous people go and ski. And that's another place they put it in. Um, you know, I think the mantras ones are going to be tough. I growing up there, there's a lot of ranchers, a lot of farmers. The wolves aren't going to work too well there. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that <laughs> on that matter. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, they plan to put about 50 wolves in their estimate. Um, I mean, I'm, I've heard people have seen wolves within that um, quarter stretch between Gunnison and Montrose anyway. So I, I think wolves are already there. There's a big thing, you know, in that area when I was, when they wanted to reintroduce wolves and people like saying, well, here's wolves on our game camera. Here are them on our home cameras. And, the Department of Fish and Game, where Colorado Parks were, I was like, that's not a wolf, but it was a wolf. Yeah. You know, they would say, well, we can't confirm it's a wolf because it was from like X, Y, and Z, but it was, it was dumb. They so get it'll be with the mountain lions here as people will pop up with the game cameras and all. We don't have them here. Mm -mm. We don't have them here. Mm -mm. You're mistaken. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, they're there. They just, don't want to admit they're there because that screws up the government's plans unfortunately unfortunately but we will be back after a quick word from our good old friends at pure pro they're back for another year with comfy seating with us and we're excited to have them back and welcome back everybody to d and d outdoors it is 2023 new year new us right dustin <laughs> how you doing yes. this year <laughs> we're falling out getting ready for another cold spell coming through oh yeah i'm glad i don't have to deal with that as of yet in arizona so should be good to go on having to deal with the cold spells and all that fun stuff out here yeah we we lost power the friday before christmas and it was supposed to be down in the single digits. We didn't mm. get power back till Christmas. It's the first time I've ever seen the water in the toilet bowl frozen. Really? Oh, geez. That doesn't sound like much fun at all. Oh, it was not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
Oh, so you got bad. What What do you do then? Go outside? I broke out the sleeping bag. Luckily, Adam was at his mom's for Christmas, so I was here by myself. So if I got cold, I'd go sit at the car for a little while, whatever. Gotcha. Oh, man. Yeah, we don't have to deal with that in Arizona. So well, I'm glad you survived it. And you didn't yeah. lose any, didn't get any frostbite that you know of? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Always got a little fun to it, right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, well, we hope all you guys had a great, guess what, December was the last time we were on here. We took a little, took a little break from y'all. I'm sure you guys missed us dearly. We are, what, the number two podcast in Uganda? We found out over winter break, so mm -hmm. welcome to all, all of our Ugandians or people from Uganda. We're glad, we're glad you find us fun to listen to. So, yeah. Well, in case you're listening from Uganda and you want to hunt Arizona, the Arizona Elk and Pronghorn Draw just opened up today. You have until February 14th, so until Valentine's Day, to put in for um, the Elk and Pronghorn Draw out here in Arizona. Um, it's that time of year now. Draws are going to start opening up, and the fun will begin where the states will get to take your money, and hopefully you can go hunting. If not... Thank you. I guess they can just thank you for the donations you made to them. That's right. Keeping the game commission employed. Yeah, keeping them fat and sassy. But, you know, I think speaking of hunting, there's going to be some good – I think there's going to be some new hunting opportunities coming up here within the next two to three years. Um, we have talked about extensively last year. Grizzly bears attacking people, college wrestlers wrestling grizzly bears to save their friend. Um, now, the Montana Fish and Wildlife is drafting a proposal or going with Alternative B, which would help delist the grizzly bears off the Endangered Species Protection Act and return hunting manage or return management of the grizzly bears to the state. Um, hunting will obviously be part of this management plan. Uh, researching this, it was kind of surprising. They're estimating there's 1,800 to 2,000 grizzly bears in Montana. Darn. That's a lot of bears. It is. Yeah. Um, they just extended the public comment for 30 days. So you have until, well, they did previously. So you have until February 4th now to make a comment on it. Um, you can email them um, or you go on. You can go onto their website. We'll share the link uh, with this as well in our Instagram and Facebook pages of how you can make your comment. You can also read the drafts on there. Um, yeah, 2,000 grizzly bears. That's a lot of damn bears. Yeah. What and they're only mean? elk, deer, dogs. Yeah, it's cutting on your, your elk population too. Yeah, I've been reading online with the grizzly bears and wolves between that, that – um. There's a lot of moose and elk populations that are taking the hit now in Montana because it's not like that's spread out across the state of Montana. They're only in like about four different zones. So, really? yeah. So, yeah, the grizzly bear population doesn't span the whole state of, um, of Montana. It only, um, it only spans, I think they said about four different zones. And I believe, you know, if you think of it, a lot of eastern Montana is actually like the, um, um, is actually like the plains area. So like a lot of where the grizzly bears are located are like in the what's that western side of the state. So yeah. they're within kind of they run along the um, greater Yellowstone obviously where grizzly bears are world famous for the, then the north west corners of the state along the um Idaho border on that side and then there's a little bit of a population within the Idaho as well within kind of the Bitterroot Valleys but yeah so it's not like it's the whole state it's only about a third of Montana where all these bears are at and that's even more sand yeah yeah it's definitely interesting so I guess I wonder it, how many like how many bears per square mile it is in hmm that is interesting I, I'm not sure uh, I'm not. I'm not sure one bit on that. That would be 
interesting to, to find out. That. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely something that no. Um, it does look like they also might possibly be coming to Washington. I know that's something that they want to do is put them in the Northern Cascades in their home range. They're just, they're just throwing stuff out there everywhere. You know, we're just going to, everybody gets a wild animal. That um you know help i don't know bring them back i guess is what they want to do here in arizona they center for biological diversity those lovely people they want the fish and wildlife services to reintroduce take a guess what do you think they want to reintroduce here in arizona take a guess probably won't guess it but. Is it a mammal? Yes, it is a mammal. And it eats huh? stuff. Huh? And it eats stuff. <laughs> Wild cows. No, we already had those problems. Okay. The, they would like to reintroduce jaguars to Arizona and the Gila around the, on the New Mexico Arizona border in the Gila National Forest because. Technically, this is Jaguars' home range. Um, we do get Jaguars down south um, every now and then on trail cameras. But the problem is the extent of this home range isn't known. They do know Jaguars used to be here, but there wasn't a stable population ever really recorded in Arizona. Typically, what we get are like the wandering males that are looking for new territories or just coming up here. But there's not a stable breeding population here. Um, Another thing, the Gila National Forest is one of the best areas in the country to hunt elk. So while you're out there, you have jaguars coming at you. Uh -huh. I've seen about them, yeah. That's pretty yeah. Good. Yeah, I've, I've heard stories about people seeing them down south. I don't know how much I believe that, but in southern Arizona, because there, there have been recording sites on game cameras and stuff of them. But yeah, they want to bring that into there. And of course, have the government pay for it and Really have no plan to manage. We really like kind of like the wolves, just toss it over, push for it, and then bring them in. Um, the problem How is, big are they? oh, they're huge. They make mountain lions look small. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we've got stories of like the bobcats here that'll attack you know turkey hunters sometimes. Yeah. No. This will. So I was I was listening to an interview. With a biologist that is kind of against the reintroduction of jaguars here. And they'll eat mountain lions. So it'll help, it'll reduce the mountain lion population. Um, full grown jaguar measures five to eight feet from nose to tail and between 140 to 300 pounds. So, um, yeah, a. That's a big old cat. Yeah. A. Adult male jaguar, for example, weighs between about 135 to 175 pounds, while females weigh between 90 to 105 pounds. So it's about double the size. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I don't I don't see it happening. That's I think that's a push. I don't think first we got wolves in that area already. We're gonna toss jaguars in the mix. Jaguars are gonna eat the wolves, I guess, eventually probably will. Um, because jaguars aren't afraid of anything. And then on top of all of that, I mean, there's really, I don't know, really much management plan. Um, it's it's just they just make it up as they go. Um, you know, they want to essentially, in my opinion, this is gonna be a way. Um, you know, even in Mexico, these jaguars are on the brink of extinction just because there's not much genetic diversity around them because they're a population that's just kind of stuck. You know, there's no, the closest other ones are down south and like the least. So it's not like they're traveling, they're stuck here. Right. Um, and essentially it's just a way to try to eliminate hunting by just keep adding more and more big predators to the mix. In my opinion. You know, I've heard stories that they want to also eventually bring grizzly bears back to Arizona. That ain't gonna happen. You know, you can have grizzly bears, jaguars, <laughs> wolves. You wouldn't be able to go at your house. No. They might as well just bring back a, like a T-Rex while they're at it. Didn't they <laughs> do a, 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 a woolly mammoth? 
I think they're trying to do it. I don't know if they redid it yet. I know I've heard about that in the past, but I don't think they actually like succeeded with it. Take so, your guns and bring back T Rex. Yeah. And here's the thing too. I have been um the reading, you know, in the past. Um, there's a lot of um what's the best way to put it? People in the country south of us that have killed these jaguars. So there's gonna be repopulating going down to Mexico and they're gonna get killed down in Mexico. So there was a case of that where uh, it was like called it was a famous jaguar that was like one of the first ones on camera and then no one saw it, then all of a sudden they saw it in Mexico or someone killed it. So, I mean, you're going to be facing that, too. Well. Yeah. It'll be interesting. It'll be definitely interesting to see um, what they want to do here. On top of that, you know, the wolves in Colorado are going to be reintroduced. They have found two spots. One is going to be between Monarch Pass, between Gunnison and Montrose. Or actually used to live in Montrose. Beautiful area, great mule deer hunting. The interesting, a lot of ranching area up there. It's very open. And the other one's gonna be between Glenwood Springs and Vale, which I like, because that's where all the people that voted for the Wolves are gonna be at or around. Vale's where all the rich people live at, like Aspen and all the famous people go and ski. And that's another place they put it in. Um, you know, I think the Montrose ones are gonna be tough. I Growing up there, there's a lot of ranchers, a lot of farmers. The Wolves aren't going to work too well there um that's all i'm going to say about that <laughs> on that matter um so it'll be interesting to see you know they plan to put about 50 wolves in their estimate um i mean i'm i've heard people have seen wolves within that um quarter stretch between gunnison and montrose anyway so i, I think wolves are already there there's a big thing, you know, in that area when I was when they wanted to reintroduce wolves of people like saying, Well, here's Wolves on our game camera, here are them on our home cameras in the Department of Fish and Game, where Colorado Parks where I was like, that's not a wolf, but it was a wolf. Yeah. You know, they would say, Well, we can't confirm it's a wolf because it was from like X, Y, and Z, but it was it was dumb. They so get like that with the mountain lines here is people will pop up with the game cameras and all, we don't have them here. We don't have them here. You're mistaken. Yeah. No, they're there. They just don't want to admit they're there because that screws up the government's plans. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But we will be back after a quick word from our good old friends at Pure Pro. They're back for another year with comfy seating with us. We're excited yes. to have them back. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, it was gonna be a, the wolves are not gonna make it there in the mantra side of things. They'll be the farmers will kill them and bury them. Yeah, I mean, bring back everything is what they want to do, but yeah, we won't. What address do you send it to? Ours. Which, which is what? <laughs> you sure you didn't send it to Gammy's? I put it on Second Street. Oh, shit. 147 Second Street. All right. It ain't showed up yet. You got a tracking number? Yeah. You sure it ain't out for delivery? Okay. So this is why I need you to buy my stuff. Well, it, you stop, you know, just running around, just buying all, everything like, yeah. Let's see. Says it's in or at the mailbox at 3.04. Okay. 
mailbox. Go check the mailbox. I, I got the mail, so it, if it come with the post office, it didn't show up. Damn kid. All right, he's gone. All right. Uh, hang on, let me just send this email real quick. Uh, it works bugging me. Oh, man. You got it? Yeah. Where was it? All right. Well, he's got the mail today. It must have been last night's mail. All right. Thank you. All right, get out of here. Rude? Yeah. A lot. See, he doesn't like me. <laughs> if he didn't like you, I don't think you would be talking. Living here. Yeah. <laughs> On the property. I guess you got it. Get your hand out your ass. Not get your hand off your white wanker. Not. <laughs> Don't now. smell it now. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Door up to my room. <laughs> I am not taking that out either. Please, it's you get that. You get that shit from your mama. I didn't do that. That is that's gonna be our opening line now, for when we intro this. <laughs> uh, cry yourself to sleep I don't care I ain't the one that did it <laughs> oh man I always had some fun to it right <laughs> oh man and as we said <clears throat> I gotta come back on that one <laughs> oh all right. And as we said, you know, be ready in the field, have your prayer pro out there, be comfortable. I forgot the other weekend I fell off a cliff. It just happened to be the luck of forgetting your peer pro, I guess, because my legs weren't stable because I was sitting on those rocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thanks to the mysterious adventure buck. Dustin, you want to tell us about this buck? Oh, uh, it was a buck that they had collared to do some type of research. And in a span of 22 days, the buck had traveled 186 miles, crossing nine major highways and seven rivers. And they had no idea why. I'm going to assume it was during rutting season, so. Yeah, that would be my guess. That's pretty wild. That's a, it is. That's a lot of traveling that deer did and where is this um from this deer this is in illinois or is this a uh, east coast deer it was, deer? Illinois. It, it was oh. illinois i believe yeah very interesting that you know i guess what you do for love right travel through yeah, nine yes. highways seven rivers 186, 186 miles. miles oh my goodness it's a lot it's a lot of walking Walking, running, trying yeah. to dodge, dodging cars, dodging <laughs> dodges, yeah, boats. dodging do boats, a little bit of everything. Probably got shot at a couple times. Why it was um, on the way sure, yeah. there. Oh man, yeah, that sounds that sounds like quite the adventure that uh, deer took there. Even we have a hairless deer killed in Illinois. What is up with these Illinois deer? Uh, Southern Illinois hunter snags extremely rare hairless deer. Uh, could you it imagine? was the third recorded case according to the, the uh, WFCN News of Illinois. Did you, what would you just do? Like, could you imagine? Uh, well, obviously we post these pictures too throughout the week on our Instagram and Facebook. But if you imagine seeing that, that deer walking through the woods. I want. I mean, that's just some crazy stuff right there. 
Yeah, you, you kind of wonder, is it, is it genetics? Is it got mange? Is it something wrong with it? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a little... It? I believe you have to eat what you shoot. So if I shot it, yes, I would. But I probably I wouldn't know. shoot it. I, I'd probably have to call the game commission in. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would call the game commission in first. Um, and then after the game commission says, yeah, you could eat it, then um, I would eat it. But I would definitely get it tested first before I ate it. Oh, yeah, <sighs> definitely. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see why there'd be an issue with eating it. I mean, I assume it's just the normal, normal deer, but um, I don't know. Well, that, that picture I sent you from one of them groups I was in that somebody had killed a deer, and I, I'm not sure where it was from. I ain't sure which group it was in now, but when they went to to field dress it, their organs were blue. Yeah, you sent me that. That's I wouldn't eat that. Mm -mm. Once it gets on the inside, <laughs> mm, that's where I limit it. You, I'll do and anything but that. Wasn't some pigs in California like that too, and it come back that they were getting into some kind of antifreeze or something? I believe so. I know um, here in Arizona, um, I've had some buddies that they shot a bear, um, and the the bear they couldn't see from a while from their, like from the distance, obviously and they shot the bear and the um, bear had tumors all over it. They didn't want to even touch the bear. So they called the game, the, you have to, for an Arizona, when you kill a bear, you have to um, report it to game and fish and the game and fish does their, does their thing. Um, like, you know, the testing it and all that. But so they didn't even, they wouldn't even touch the bear. So they uh uh they called Game and Fish. Game and Fish like got the biologist on the phone, which the biologist called right away to them. And um turns out it's good kind of a common issue. These tumors, you can't eat the meat. So the biologist did take the um the bear from them and like gave him the skull back and stuff. Um wow. So that's going a, a very long roundabout way to get to my point, isn't it? <laughs> But essentially what happened back in World War II, there's a bunch of uranium mines up in this area and the bears den up in the uranium mines in the winter and get cancer from the uranium mines. Wow. That's where my point was getting to. So, okay. uh, yeah. So that's something that, I mean, down here is different. I mean, it's only that unit that I know, but not very common for this, these bears to have it. But yeah, they were telling me how freaky he was. They didn't want to touch the bear on it, which I don't blame them. Yeah, I don't either. But I guess you they are what you eat, you know. I mean, I feel animals that you hunt closer to farms taste a little bit better than the ones you get out eating all the rough cactus and stuff out here. I mean, I know you East Coast people only hunt corn-fed, alfalfa-fed, nicely right. fed deer. You guys give it a little massage at night before it gets out of its bed so it's nice and tender. Tuck it in. Yeah, tuck it in. Give it a kiss goodnight and say, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. Where here we got all this crap we got to hunt in. They're eating cactus and you're getting into the cactus and you'll hit you in the finger and its stomach. You know. <laughs> Never thought about that. That, that. You could actually, if they ate the cactus, you could actually feel it through their stomach. Yeah. So I guess that's a big thing. People that like, fortunately, hopefully this year I kill javelina. But people that shoot javelinas, they eat like prickly pears and stuff. Like when they'll have the needles in their stomach when you got it. Wow. Yeah. So. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it very is. And we'll leave you guys on that note, thinking of what your animal eats. We're really excited. You know, we got a lot planned for this year, as always. We're glad to be back. We hope you guys had a great twenty. 22 and a great start to your 2023s to our friends in uganda hello we'd love to hear about your hunting stories over there if you guys do hunt we'd love to maybe reach us on facebook or instagram at dnd outdoor podcast and we'd love to have one of you guys on the show or a bunch of you guys or we'd love just to hear about hunting in uganda um have a great rest of your day if you're heading to work it will be over soon
And as we said, you know, be ready in the field, have your curb pro out there, be comfortable. I forgot the other weekend I fell off the cliff. It just happened to be the luck of forgetting your peer pro, I guess, because my legs weren't stable because I was sitting on those rocks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's the mysterious adventure buck. Dustin, you want to tell us about this buck? Uh, it was a buck that they had collared to do some type of research. And in a span of 22 days, the buck had traveled 186 miles, crossing nine major highways and seven rivers. And they have no idea why. I'm going to assume it was during rutting season, so. Yeah, that would be my guess. That's pretty wild. That's a, it is. That's a lot of traveling that deer did and where is this um from this deer this is in illinois or is this a uh, east coast deer it was, illinois. It, it was oh. illinois i believe yeah very interesting that you know i guess what you do for love right travel through yeah, nine gosh. highways seven rivers 186, 186 miles. miles oh my goodness it's a lot it's a lot of walking Walking, running, trying yeah. to dodge, dodging cars, dodging little, dodges, yeah, boats. dodging boats, a little bit of everything. Probably got shot at a couple times. Why it was um, on the way sure, yeah. there. Oh man, yeah, that sounds that sounds like quite the adventure that uh, deer took. Deer. Even we have a hairless deer killed in Illinois. What is up with these Illinois deer? Uh, Southern Illinois hunter snags extremely rare hairless deer. Uh, could you it imagine? was the third recorded case according to the, the uh, WFCN News of Illinois. Did you? What would you just do? Like, could you imagine? Uh, well, obviously we post these pictures too throughout the week on our Instagram and Facebook. But if you imagine seeing it, that deer walking through the woods. I want. I mean, that's just some crazy stuff right there. Yeah, you, you kind of wonder: is it is it genetics? Is it got mange? Is it something wrong with it? Yeah. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, Would it's a little. It? I believe you have to eat what you shoot. So if I shot it, yes, I would. But I probably mm-hmm. wouldn't shoot it. I, I'd probably had to call the game commission in. Yeah, I would, I would call the game commission in first. Um, and then after the game commission says, yeah, you could eat it, then um, I would eat it. But I would definitely get it tested first before I ate it. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't see why there would be an issue with eating it. I mean, I assume it's just the normal, normal deer. But um, I don't know. Well, that, that picture I sent you from one of them groups I was in that somebody had killed a deer, and I, I'm not sure where it was from. I ain't sure which group it was in now, but when they went to, to field dress it, their organs were blue. Yeah, you sent me that. That's I wouldn't eat that. Mm-mm. Once it gets on the inside, <laughs> mm, that's where I limit it. You, I'll do Maybe, anything but that. Wasn't some pigs in california like that too and it come back that they were getting into some kind of antifreeze or something i believe so i know um here in arizona um i've had some buddies that they shot a bear um and the the bear they couldn't see from a while from their like from the distance obviously they shot the bear and the um, bear had tumors all over it. They didn't want to even touch the bear. So they called the game, the, you have to, for in Arizona, when you kill a bear, you have to um, report it to Game and Fish. And then Game and Fish does their, does their thing, um, like, you know, the testing it and all that. But so they didn't even, they wouldn't even touch the bear. So they, uh, uh, they, Call Game and Fish. Game and Fish like got the biologist on the phone, which the biologist called right away to them, and um, 
turns out it's good, kind of a common issue. These tumors, you can't eat the meat. So the biologist did take the, um, the bear from them and like gave him the skull back and stuff. Um, wow. So that's going a very long roundabout way to get to my point, isn't it? Um, but essentially what happened back in World War II, there's a bunch of uranium mines up in this area and the bears den up in the uranium mines in the winter and get cancer from the ura uranium mines. Wow. That's where my point was getting to. So, okay. uh, yeah. So that's something that, I mean, down here is different. I mean, it's only that unit that I know of. It's not very common for this, these bears to have it. But yeah, they were telling me how freaky he was. They didn't want to touch the bear on it, which I don't blame them. Yeah, I don't either. But I guess you they are what you eat, you know. I mean, I feel animals that you hunt closer to farms taste a little bit better than the ones you get out eating all the rough cactus and stuff out here. I mean, I know you East Coast people only hunt corn-fed, alfalfa-fed, nicely right. fed deer. You guys give it a little massage at night before it gets out of its bed so it's nice and tender. Tuck it in. Yeah, tuck it in. Give it a kiss goodnight and say, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. Where here we got all this crap we got to hunt in. They're eating cactus and you're getting into the cactus milk to hit you in the finger and its stomach. You know. <laughs> Never thought about that, that, that you could actually, if they ate the cactus, you could actually feel it through their stomach. Yeah. So I guess that's a big thing. People that like, fortunately, hopefully this year I kill javelina, but people that shoot javelinas, they eat like prickly pears and stuff. Like when they'll have the needles in their stomach when you got it. Wow. Yeah. So. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it very is. And we'll leave you guys on that note thinking of what your animal eats we're really excited you know we got a lot planned for this year as always we're glad to be back we hope you guys had a great 2022 and a great start to your 2023s to our friends in uganda hello we'd love to hear about your hunting stories over there if you guys do hunt we'd love maybe reach us on facebook or instagram at dnd outdoor podcast and we'd love to have one of you guys on the show or a bunch of you guys. Or we'd love just to hear about hunting in Uganda. Um, have a great rest of your day. If you're heading to work, it will be over soon.